Hi, good evening, everybody. This is Dave Matthews, Personal Navigation. It's the 9th of May, 2013. Um, looking forward to tonight's show. We've got a special guest on tonight, which is Dean Clifford. He's taken time out of his working day to come on and, uh, you know, you know, speak to us about what the person is and some of his uh, the stuff that he's been doing over in Canada. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. He's just recently done um, a month in jail uh, due to a, a traffic stop where the guy, the policeman, actually attacked him. Um, they filed eight charges on on him. Um, he he did actually fight back to defend himself. Uh, he could have been straight out. Uh, the same afternoon, but he refused to sign bail. Um, they ended up putting him putting him in solitary, solitary confinement. He ate uh, nothing but fresh fruit. He would not eat, eat any of the prison food, um, and he stuck to his guns. Would not sign bail, um, and navigated his way through all of the court cases until they had to stay uh, proceedings on eight on all eight charges. So he's got a monstrous civil claim against them now because. Um, they basically bought false claims against him. Um, but he, he, you know, he lives by his word. So very lucky to have him on. Uh, just wanted to talk tonight, basically, you know, again about the legal person and about how to use the legal person in the court system, how to use the legal person, uh, when filling in paperwork. I want to talk, uh, tonight about one of, you know, a couple of my favorite subjects, council tax, bailiffs, that type of thing. Um, so I just thought I'd kick off there with the, with the council tax, um, thing because I don't know whether any of you are aware. Oh, oh, uh, before I go any further as well, uh, what I'd like to do tonight, if there are any questions, um, I'd like you to, to sort of jump in when you're ready to ask a question. The only reason I say that is that you don't always, sometimes you want to ask a question, but you, you, by the time it's your turn, you jump in and you've forgotten what you want to say. So if you, if you, as soon as you want a, a question, if you just put your hand up in the chat box or, or phone in or whatever, um, I'd be glad for you to join into the call. And I'm also glad, you know, to hear from people that have been in court, tried stuff. Uh, and failed at stuff and maybe we can cast some light on you know and use it as an example of why um you failed on that occasion um so the council tax i don't know if whether people are aware um they're actually having closed hearings now for all council tax which they have been for you know quite a while um but with council tax a very very easy um defense from the word go with ownership of property whether you're a landlord who's who's let your property to somebody the property is always owned um an ownership it, uh, there's a thing called fee simple absolute which means that the ownership is free of condition um when the council are attempting to tax you you know tax your home uh they're actually placing a condition of ownership they're trying to attach a condition um and right off the back what you want to be saying you want to be asking the council is where is their equitable claim to the land or to the property um if they have no equitable claim to the land or the property they cannot attach conditions to it only an owner can attach conditions um to a property and i'll give you like a, a very basic example um if i had a car uh, and I lent it to uh, my friend Gareth Linard, for an example. Um, and I said, Gareth, you know, there's the car. You can use it. Uh, I own it. I'm, I'm trusting you with my car. Uh, but for every mile you do, can you give me maybe 10 pence? I, I can do that, you know, and if he doesn't like it, he can give me my car back. But the council cannot just rock up and attach a condition of ownership um to a property which they have no equitable claim or equitable title so that is a very very good argument right from the word go um and you will in most cases beat them with that and if they you know if they try the 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 tact of sort of ignoring you um always put down on paper the capacity in which you're writing private private citizen private individual um 
authorised representative, whatever, however you want to qualify your signature, always remember when you write to somebody, qualify your signature so that they know what capacity you're writing to them in. And when I say that, um, again, we come round to the legal person. Uh, you know, this, a solicitor could write me a letter, and if he's writing his let, if he's if he's writing to me in his capacity as a solicitor, it will have his, you know, all of his letters below his name, all of his qualifications. So I know he's writing to me in that capacity. So whenever you contact somebody like the council or the courts or the park in charge people always write to them in that capacity always always clarify who you are when you write that letter um the councils now are renowned for um i've seen a lot of cases um where they're issuing liability orders on people before the actual court case has taken place um so we're seeing that that's becoming more and more and more uh, apparent that they make they you know they're making these sorts of mistakes so that's another way of tripping them up um and getting them on the back foot so the um the next sort of tactic they use then is they'll put the uh debt over to a bailiff firm of some kind whether it be uh excel um Swift. Uh, I've actually received death threats off Swift, Swift, which is quite funny. But Swift bailiffs are particularly uh, awkward customers. And Excel now have started using um, implication of violence tactics. They they were at a friend of mine who I was helping. They were at his house for six hours, threatening to break the door down. And um, you know, after the first hour, I, t- I did point out to him that if they were going to break the door down, they would have done it. Um, but they're actually claiming now that they can actually break your door down. But to do that, they have to have a warrant of entry and don't be afraid to stand up, you know, for your rights. If these bailiffs come round and they're, you know, they're trying to be intimidating, get a camera on them. Yeah. So if any if any of you guys have had any issues or if anybody wants to ask me any quick questions about the bailiffs or the, you know, the, the council tax, because they use these bailiffs for the likes of um, parking charge notices and all that type of stuff. So if, if anybody needs any help or advice on that and you want to ask me a quick question then please do so now no everybody's good with bailiffs <laughs> so going back to the legal person then and how to use the legal person in in court the whenever they build a case in a magistrate's court they they always are they're armed with coercive powers as i said before they use presumptions assumptions we don't know you know what assumptions they're using behind the scenes but they build the case up you know usually through a statute well always through a statute pretty much um and they basically call it they they the, the magistrates court call it a criminal court or criminal law so they they're claiming then that there is a crime committed so whether it be you know failing to to produce your documents speeding tax mot no insurance anything like that council tax whatever whatever it may be they're they're claiming that it's a crime and the crime has been committed and i'm sure people that are sort of seasoned and you know well into this stuff uh and looking into it and studying uh, are fully aware that in order for there to be a crime there has to be a victim there has to be what they call a corpus delecti or an injured party so that is what they call a fundamental um flaw in the case or a fun you know a fundamental deficiency in what they're coming at at you um and if you take the sort of take an afternoon if you're new to this or you're going to start sort of playing about and doing a bit of experimenting with the with the court system uh what i would advise you to do is go in and maybe sit for a couple of afternoons watch you know 10 or more cases going in and you you'll you'll sort of get the feel you'll get the feel of the building because he, the building is set out in a way the room is set out in a way to intimidate you you know you've got the you know the main magistrate sat in the middle of the chair uh, and the two idiots beside him um so you've got three idiots and then a sort of uh, a wannabe judge who is the clerk uh during the proceedings so and it, and it was all done in a way to intimidate you and they speak to you like as if you're shit on their shoe that just came in off the street. Um, and they will use tactics such as uh, one guy I've been helping who did 
who failed, he sort of got, he was cutting his teeth in it and he went into a courtroom situation and they were trying to get his name, um, his name and address. And they were asking for it quite sort of um, aggressively. And he was saying, well, I'm so-and-so, I'm here to deal with that. Um, and then he tried to, to say that he was there by way of a special appearance. But as he said, special, um, they jumped, they absolutely jumped on him and told him that he had to answer the question. Don't say anything, answer the questions. Well, that's rubbish. He had the floor. So you can say, excuse me, I have the floor. I have the floor. I, you know, I am speaking. Um, make sure you get it down because what happened to him later then is that they came, they came back round on him because um, they wouldn't let it. He, he got scared basically at that point. Um, stopped saying what he was going to say. Lost his thought, his, his thought thought process and you know they got jurisdiction over him and then a little way into it just just to sort of mess with him a bit they turned around and went oh uh, what was that sentence you were going to say uh and he said well i'm here by way of special appearance blah, yada 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 and by that time you know they just turned around and said well that that sentence has no relevance and you know that was that was fact at that point that sentence had no relevance at all because they'd already got him they'd already got jurisdiction over him so what happens at the start of the at the start of any court case whatever it's to do with they will always try and jump on you and, and sort of intimidate you into not being able to speak always stand your ground remember remember these idiots on the bench and that's what they are they are idiot there's you know idiots with another idiot telling them what they can do that you know for the most part the three magistrates don't have a clue what law is they don't have a clue what they're doing they have to be told you know by the wannabe judge clark sitting there on the bench so don't be intimidated by them they are people that's all they are they are nothing special so you know kind of if you if you sort of get the feel for the court, get the feel for the room. Watch watch what happens, and you see you see people who are out on the street. If you met them in a in a back alley or a you know in a club, and they had a couple of pints, they'd smash your face down your throat, <laughs> and then they get into the courtroom uh, situation, and they're like Bambi. It's unbelievable. If you go and sit, you know, for a few afternoons and watch, you know, the the most violent nasty people you could imagine do turn into bambi and they're like yes that's my name blah 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 and they just get done every time so you know once you once you understand what the legal person is how to use the legal person you will be having fun and it is i can i can assure you it's the most fun in the world going in to these people who think they can intimidate you and push you around and for the most part, you know, extract money out of you, your hard-earned money. Um, when you start going in and doing it, it's it's slightly addictive. It is so much fun. So, you know, the, the person, it uh, people are sort of looking for um, the danger that we that we're in is that people keep looking for one sort of magic sentence or like a you know a phrase that's going to be like a like stop everything immediately so you need to be prepared in the situation when people start asking you you know what you're talking about when you're saying this stuff you need to know your stuff you need to know who you are when you're in the room um because if if you don't and you just go in and try and sort of make a statement like a like a one line statement or something like that they're gonna they're gonna you know there's a there's a saying we know you by your actions they will soon know exactly who you are. And if you don't know your stuff, they will grease you up and shaft you as quick as lightning. And that will be, you know, that that's it. Yeah. And I, I was just reading in the uh, chat there, there was somebody saying presumption of law is nearly always used in courts. And it is. So when you go into a courtroom uh, scenario, always, always say on record um, that you rebut every single presumption and assumption that they are making and always say i am not prepared to waive any deficiencies in your case but make sure you put it on record you say for the record or on the record because if you don't as i've said before if you don't put it on record it didn't happen and we've seen this many many times that you know this this has been the case all over the world um you know people have been sort of uh 
Oh, hold on a sec. Lee, if you want to just jump in, Lee, and ask a question there. Hello, Lee. Yeah, sorry, I was talking to a muted mic. And, and, That's all right. Yeah, talk about the, the presumptions and you're saying on the record, obviously you have to say it's stated to be on the public record, not just on the record, because the record of the courts is for the bar association's use only. The public record's a completely different beast. And you have to claim, you have to make sure you get a public record hearing. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, public record. Um, put it on the public record. I didn't know they used two different types of record, actually. Um, the, and the other thing always to do, uh, that's a very good point, though. Thanks for that, Lee. The, the, another good thing to do is always take a witness in with you. And if you can, you know, take 20 witnesses in with you because they really don't like that. Um, and I think uh, Prajna wanted to come in there as well. Uh, just uh, Anthony in the in the IRC chat asks: Is there any obligation to stand as and when the magistrate leaves and enters the room when they say "all rise"? I don't, but they do. They absolutely come unglued when when you don't. Um, when I'm in there helping somebody, I tend to stand, and you know, because it's uh, it's for them to do it. So, but if I was if I go when I go in myself, I wouldn't stand and sit. I just stay stood up and end the story. If I'm, I go in stood up and I stay stood up, um, if they start, you know, coming unglued and start screaming, "You stand up, contempt the court," and all that sort of crap and nonsense and pig puke at you, um, just say, "Well, you know, can you give me any reason why I should bow to another man's will?" They they would they would throw the contempt the court chestnut at you. But if a magistrate did that. Um, you know, he's, pra he's practicing law from the bench, really, and they're not allowed to do that. You know, just say it's my understanding you're there to, you know, referee. Ask them. Ask them if they can cite the law that requires you to stand and sit for them because it's your understanding that we're, that we're all equal in the eyes of the law because that's a maxim of law, right? We're all equal in the eyes of the law. I don't know if that makes sense. Does anybody else want to jump in there? Yeah, was there not two kinds of contempt of court as well? Oh, I wouldn't know the two kinds of contempt of court. Contempt of court is actually a common law, is actually common law, isn't it? A common law crime. So they say that common law doesn't exist and then they start trying to throw contempt of court at you. But you can, another way out of contempt of court, if they really start becoming unglued, you can simply ask for forgiveness. Just say, please forgive me. Um, because they have to provide a remedy at that time. But the, for the most part, the contempt of court chestnut is, is a sort of a intimidation tactic. If you, if you, you know, that's, that's when they use it. They, and they really do get excited about it. A lot of the time they don't use it. And then you'll come across just one complete asshole in the middle that thinks he's God almighty. And they will start screaming it the moment you don't blow your nose when they say, but you've just got to stand your ground again. You know, the court process, don't forget everybody that the court process is adversarial. It's a fight. You know, that, that's, it is. Uh, of a sort is a fight it's an adversarial process so the only rights you've got when you're in that room is the rights that you're prepared to stand there and fight for otherwise you've got no rights and you just get shafted and and kicked out of the door and you know next and they don't want you in there that if you start you know if you start sort of challenging and, and using the rights the right sort of stuff and using the person in the way and using the capacity of the person and you know for a start like chucking that that sort of uh, spanner in the works of you know rebutting every single presumption and assumption that they're making um then you really do throw big spanners in the works because they cannot proceed because they know that there are there are deficiencies in the case so by that and that's every single like i say that's every single case that they come at you with there's always a deficiency in the case you know, especially in the sort of like the stuff like the traffic stuff and things like that. I mean, if you're in magistrate's court because, you know, you beat the living daylights out of somebody, then then there is an injured party. So you couldn't really say that there's a fundamental deficiency in the case. But it's the type the type of stuff we've got to we've got to be fighting because I, I mean, I, you know, I don't condone uh, violence. If somebody's in there because they've beaten the living daylights out of some, somebody for no reason at all, uh, then they deserve to be you know, in that system. But what I'm trying to fight is the the way that they can just pass a law. We have to, you know, we think we have to obey. And it basically is just designed to take money, up, money off us. And we just fear every single thing that they do to us. We're just in fear all the time. 
and like I say, you see it so many times now where where people are just frightened to death and these people would, you know, kill you in a heartbeat if they saw you downtown and they'd had too many beers. So it, the system certainly works from a fear point of view and we all just keep towing the line and shrugging our shoulders and thinking, what can we do? Well, there's a lot of stuff we can do if you learn how to, you know, how to conduct yourself and and learn about the capacities of the person and i think what caused a lot of the confusion was there was a video there on youtube a good few years ago now with a chap called raymond st Clair who went to gloucester court uh it was gloucester court i think uh first of all and he actually went to cumbran court as well um with a council tax uh case and they were claiming common law jurisdiction and a few things it did throw a spanner in the works during the case and it sort of got a lot of people's interest, you know, and it's it, it's been taken down and then put back up and, you know, the video sort of keeps coming back online. But there's a lot of, although it was great what they did, they they couldn't, they just wanted to get them out of the court, uh, the court building as soon as they could because they were holding up, you know, the business for the day because they want to move as many people through there as they can to make as much money as they can. Um, but sort of going in and claiming the common law jurisdiction and sort of saying I'm not the name, I'm not, you know, I'm not a fiction and stuff like that. I'm a man, you know. That that's it's just a, well, it's a, it's just a silly argument and it doesn't it doesn't have a force or effect in the court system. They you know, if you, well, I'm a man. Well, so what? I'm a man. He's a man. We're all men. You know, like, it doesn't matter. They, they're they not concerned whether you're a man, woman, whatever. All they're concerned about is what, what office do you hold? What title do you hold within that system? Because the only title they can act on, as I've said before, is um, an agent or an employee of the government or crime. Um, and I sort of for people again who may not have heard you know the last sort of show um government can only legislate they can the they're a company as everybody is widely known they're a company the crown the crown corporation is a company they can only make laws that are applicable to the company um the and like i said the birth certificate is a title so they they when they write to you in a traffic case or any case to do with a statute law they're always writing to you in the capacity of the officer you know and if if all else fails you know another argument well if you're claiming i'm an officer can you tell me where my office is you know if you if you hold office in the government well where's my office can you produce a pay slip can you produce a pay, pay slip as evidence for the last time i worked for you if not, I'm leaving. You know, it, it's as simple as that. You've got to get your capacity down on paper, you know, on the court record if you have to. If they, if they won't listen to you, write it, file it, whatever you can do. Get it down. Get down what you are. Get down who you are on that day. I'm here in the capacity of a private individual. That's who, I, that's who I'm here as. What capacity are you claiming I'm here as? And if they're like, oh, well, you know, we don't know what you mean, we'll just say if you don't know what I mean, recuse yourself and bring somebody in you who does know what I mean. I mean, they'll come unglued and they'll start shouting and screaming at you and bawling at you and trying to threaten you. But they're just, people just laugh at them. I mean, if they, you know, what are they doing? They're having like a tantrum or something like they're What are they, children? I mean, they just want to control people and they think they can just shout and scream and have a tantrum and you're just going to stand there. Well, if you stand there, then you've just lost your rights. If you just stand there, you've got to fight these people. So, you know, I don't know if there's any any questions or if anybody wants to butt in at this stage again. Prajna? Uh, <clears throat> just a little bit further about what we were um, saying about uh, standing up when, when asked to do so in court. And Anthony was saying, you know, I meant that in the context of uh, when you're uh, going into cases to get some experience in court and just, you know, watching from the back. And I pointed out uh, a couple of things to him. One is that <clears throat> you need to be careful not to prejudice any any case that, that you're going in and, and observing. And and if you piss the judge off, uh, there's there's a possibility that, that you will prejudice that. Uh, and the other one is, in, in my experience, uh, all the judges do if you don't stand up 
is they say, okay, in that case, the door's that way, leave the room. Um, and, you know, but do you have anything further to, to add to that, Dave? Um, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, if you're in there just watching the system and sort of trying to get a feel um, for what the courtroom's like and sort of get a feel and get used to the surroundings of, of the courtroom, then you've got, you know, why not stand up and, and sit down? If that's what, you know, gets them off, they probably, you know, get a real high off that. But, yeah, I, I would I would certainly, if I was just in there for the day doing that, then I'd be happy enough to stand up because, like you say, if they've just had a bad day, particularly you get some of the district judges that can just be, you know, evil. And if you piss them off, then they're going to take it out on somebody. Or they might presume, because they like presumptions, they might presume that you're there with somebody who's maybe, you know, in that particular case. Um, so I would I would say that whenever, like I say, whenever I go in, I just, I just sort of stand there. Um, and if they say, oh, you know, sit down, I'll just go, no, I'm happy standing, thank you. Uh, they can't. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Come and sit on my head? I mean, you know. Again, they're not. I won't sit and stand if I'm in there. I'd rather stay stood up, and I will not stand in the dock or wherever they try and guide me to. Um, I, I will always stand where I want to stand, um, and I always, for the most, you know, I always go in and I say, "Will my inherent rights be protected by if I enter this room?" You know, and if they if they if they are getting really 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 you know unglued about it and they're like you've got to stand behind if they really if it really does get them off you standing in their stupid little box i go go right on you know get it public record again are my inherent rights protected if i stand in that box you know what are they going to say they, if they say no we'll just go okay thanks i'm leaving stick your court case up your ass you know i mean it, it, would you would you go into a, a place where your rights aren't protected so no um so it's a good point though prajna there about you know not not sort of prejudice in somebody that you don't even know so you know some cases like that then yeah you know stand up and, and sit down for the idiots and like you say when you go in on your own for the most part it's much better just to stay stood up and yeah don't let them make you sit down i suppose so I don't know if anybody uh, wanted to jump in there at all. Prajna again, was it? Uh, yeah, just to pass on another uh, couple of uh, things from Anthony. He said, uh, <clears throat> I mean, in response to what you were just saying, he, he was saying uh, it is acknowledging that they have authority over you. Uh, that's why not. And he agrees, yes, the, the solution is just don't sit in the first place. But, but he also asked, uh, is a magistrate a judge? Or, or only a magistrate? What's the difference between magistrates well, and judges? A magistrate is a lay... They're, they're supposed to be lay people. They're supposed to be nothing more than, ref, you know, um, like a, I suppose, an upstanding member of the community. So that's my chance of being a magistrate gone. <laughs> they, they're, they're there just as lay people. Um, a judge is a judge. And if you do come against, you know, a circuit judge or a district judge... Um, you know, don't underestimate them. They, then, you know, I, I, sorry, I swear, they are nasty fuckers and they are there, they are there to do everything in their power to trick. You know, if they know you're going to try and pull jurisdictional tricks on them and stuff, they, they're going to do their best. They know it's a fight and they will use everything in their, in their sort of trick book to trick you. The magistrates, most of the magistrates I've seen, um, sit there with a stupid grin on their face or, or, you know, the very serious look that they do when they look down at you and just smile at them, just, you know, just, just smile straight back at them. Um, but the judges, they're, they're sort of not to be underestimated. Don't like, don't ever underestimate a judge if you come across one. And if you, for the most part in the magistrate's court cases, if you come against a judge, it will only be one, um, when they're magistrates, which are lay people, there'll be three of them. Um, but the judge, there's there's only ever one when you've got like a district judge, circuit judge or whatever whatever judge they are. Sometimes they bring like a higher, you'll have a higher class judge. You, I don't really know the ranks of them, but um, they'll come down to a magistrate's court level and they are real tricky fuckers. So you've just got to keep your wits about you, but stand, you know, stand your ground. And like I say, it's about knowing 
who you are, and it's about getting through to everybody that these laws only apply to government. It is they are corporation rules, like the you know the sort of example I think Dean will use is the is Coca Cola. You know, Coca Cola have jurisdiction over Coca Cola employees. You know, say in England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, Coca Cola. Well. If you're not on duty at Coca-Cola and you break one of Coca-Cola's rules, can Coca-Cola haul you into a, a tribunal? They, they, they can't, you know, that you weren't on duty at the time of the complaint. So how can you have broke one of their rules? So I think Prajna wanted to jump in again there. Or was he dropped out of the call? Uh, not this time. No, not nope. this time. <laughs> uh, Lee, do you want to jump in or anybody else want to jump in at the moment? Or are there any other questions out there on the phone lines or anything? I'll just throw a little one in if I can. I, I often, uh, if I get bored, go to my local magistrate's court and refuse to stand up. <laughs> Do they come unglued? Well, every time I've had them... I, I'm gonna, I did have a little smiley web badge. Uh, smiley web. A smiley badge, which was a webcam in it. And I just, I've misplaced it. But I was actually going to go in there just so I could get um, the local clerks at Ashton Underline uh, because they are Nazis. They really are. Um, so, yeah, you can always have a bit of fun with it. I mean, they just get very, very angry normally. And um, um, I, I just push them so far and then, then I'll, I'll just say, look, I don't want to disturb the court. Uh, I was under the presumption that um, it was a request rather than an order. So rather than dis disrupt the court any further, I shall just leave. <laughs> it's real good fun, I've got to agree with you, Dave. So if you're ever bored, go to a magistrate and just don't stand up. Yeah. I like to say, I, I never realised until I heard yourself and Prazen speaking there that I could actually be prejudicing somebody else's case. Um, yeah, so... Maybe it's not such a good idea after all. But it was fun when I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a that's a good point that Prajna did sort of make there. Um, but again, you know, the fun part of it, it is fun because they are like when you really understand how they work, how they work, the magistrates and the clerk. They're like they're like kids. They're like children. They're like. You know, they're banging their chest to show you their authority, to demonstrate their authority. They're just idiots. That's what they are. They're idiots taking advantage of people's, you know, they're pillaging, plundering, ordering you. You know, you could say to them, what compels me to perform to you? Can you produce something that compels me to perform in any way for you? Because it's my understanding we're all equal before the law. You know, there's, there's loads of stuff you can, if you really, you know, you could go in and, wind them up and have a good play with them that that's i think it's all good fun but like you say you don't want to be prejudiced in other people's uh cases really um so yeah uh i didn't know if uh, i think prajna wanted to jump in there again with something yeah i'm i started off on on this stuff more over hats than standing and sitting because uh, i always wear a hat and uh, <clears throat> and usually they just ask me if I wear it for religious reasons, and if I answer yes, then uh, then they accept that. But <clears throat> I went to support a, a friend at one of his cases, and uh, and and part way part way through the case, the whoever the chief magistrate is, he he said, no, maybe "You sir, there at the back, what are you doing wearing a hat?" And and uh, <clears throat> I said I wear it for religious reasons, and uh, <clears throat> and and he said he said what religion is that? And I said well it's actually um, it's not an evangelical religion, and we don't talk to people about our religion unless they're they're actually involved in the religion it, itself, you know. And he was just about to to completely go off on on one when the uh, the clerk turned round and had a quiet word with him and he shut up but he did spend the whole of the rest of that case not paying any attention to anything else that was said but just staring at my hat <laughs> um, so uh, so you can get some some interesting situations like that as well absolutely and and that again demonstrate demonstrates that for the most part they 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 get a buzz off of um 
you know, having authority over people. But the magistrate probably, the, the clerk probably just turned around and sort of said that's a lawful excuse or something along those lines because, you know, like you say, religion is a lawful excuse to, to be able to do that. But, you know, that that's a, that's a prime example of what sort of children they've got doing these jobs. And they're, they're definitely part of the problem. And like you say... <laughs> It's just, yeah, like it, I don't know. I, it, it angers me so much I can't get my words out. But I don't know if anybody else wants to jump in there. We got partner again there. Uh, just to just to point out that we have to to bear in mind that magistrates don't actually have any legal training. Uh, this is the the job of the the clerk of the court. Ma- magistrates. The idea of magistrates is that that they represent your peers rather than having a jury of your peers they they choose three upstanding members of of society who are supposed to represent they, they're really um <clears throat> supposed to represent this this jury of your your peers uh it's not a, a a real court in terms of of you know having a judge who's a, an umpire deciding be, between cases uh, and and they don't they don't have any legal training or legal experience at all in general uh, most of them are ordinary you know doctors uh, any anyone who who they consider a respectable member of of society and it is the 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 clerk to the justices who sits there and and advises them on on all legal matters and apart from that they they're just really offering offering their opinions and this is my understanding anyway yeah absolutely they are the magistrates are lay people and they don't um like you say they have no legal training um the clerk is the acknowledged uh legal expert in the room um again the clerks aren't tricky like the district judges when you get a district judge in there um but yeah it's absolutely like you say they are just just sort of upstanding members of the community um society whatever the, yeah and th- that was just sort of prompted me on another thing the thing the word that you've got to get yeah another trick word that they use is residency or or are you a uk resident and resident is a is definitely a bad word resident is Again, resident means you hold office, um, and you can all go away and research that and and look into that. So that that's another trick, sort of. That's why you've got to quite you've got to know what you're on about. Because well, are you a resident? Well, yes. See, they will tr- they will keep trying to trick you, you know. Um, so I think Prajna wanted to jump in again there. Go on. No, not this time. That's from last time. No, nope. that's all right then. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, I was talking uh, earlier with, uh, I don't know, Sudama, if you're online at the moment. I don't know if you wanted to, if I could have a quick word about, you know, some of your stuff, not personal stuff, but some... Hello, Dave. Yeah. Hiya, how are you? Fine, thanks, mate. Yourself? Yeah, very good, very good. Um, yeah, just, uh, you know, we've got sort of, you've got Rick, Rick Simpson doing a show there twice a week and... Uh, He's talking about sort of it's it's slightly off subject, but it but I'll explain why in a second. The um, talking about medicinal use of uh, hemp oil and stuff for you know helping with diseases like uh, cancer, um, arthritis, epilepsy, many many diseases that it's that it's been proven to um, cure help uh, in many ways and. Uh, the a guy there that Sadama knows, um I think he was he must have been sort of done for growing in some way, shape or form and I but it was used as a medicine, medicine medicine, but he actually ended up getting an apology from the chief of police in his area. Is that correct, Sadama? Yeah, that's right. He's in a wheelchair, he had a car accident quite some years ago and he's um they, they came to his house for something different, and then they found his grove while they was there. They took everything off of him. Um, he went to Holland for a bit to live for a few, couple of years, and when he came back, the charges were still all there and everything, and he just got quite annoyed with the police and every, um, different things. Um, ends up getting all his grow equipment back, 
um, later on after that, the police came, they came around to get, they gave him a verbal apology where they said the, that he's fine to grow, they won't touch him while he's growing. But then when he got the written apology through, they missed the growing bit out. Wow, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it does go to show, like, when when you stand up or if you've got lawful excuse and stuff like that, you can, you know, you can beat these people. They, I, I don't know that there's many police who know that what they're doing, you know, when they take people's cars off them and, you know, such like on the side of the road. I don't know how many of them actually know that they are, you know, doing doing something which is which is against the law or not lawful. Um, I think I think it's I can't remember the exact wording, but it's un, you shouldn't deprive somebody of property without due process of law. Um, so. You know, maybe it might be an, uh, the next time somebody tries to take a car off somebody, it might be a good idea to ask them if they can have a show cause here and on the side of the road. Um, because, yeah, you're not supposed to, like I say, you're just not supposed to take somebody's property out off them without due press, process of law. Well, how can you have a here and on the side of a, a road? So the police are just, they just do what they're told. And I think that's the thing. Eventually, when when people get sort of, better at filing legal claims against the police on a, in their personal capacity, not under their corporate shield, um, when they have cars taken off them or when they, you know, beat them up or taser them or, you know, put their arms so far up behind their back that they break them and, and such like and stamp on people's chests and, you know, accidentally suffocate them, then, you know, if, en- if enough people fight them and file civil claims, then they might you know they might stop doing these things without question because they do just do stuff to us you know they get told what to do and they just go out and do it for the most part they're so ignorant of the law that you know you you talk you you get into a conversation with a policeman they haven't got a clue about the law you know they do like i've said before they they go out and employ the stupidest dumbest people that they can find because they know that they'll do these things without question um i think uh tony blair uh, years ago, um, John Hurst or John Hist, uh, his, he was saying he was actually in the police force at that time and they sifted out all of the sort of old school police. They sort of offered them a retirement policy to get them out of the force um, because they would have questioned some of the some of the stuff that Tony Blair implemented um, to employ stupid, ignorant people. Um, you know, and they, they do like a... When, when they apply to be in the police force, they have to fill in like a questionnaire and the questionnaire is designed by somebody um, to deliberately profile somebody who, who does not question. Uh, you know, and if, and if they don't meet that profile, like I said on the last show, there's, a, there's just been a case in America where they deemed, they deemed a policeman too, too brainy to be in the police force. They actually said, no, you're, you're too, you know, they came right out and said it and he's actually uh sued them for that i believe so um i don't know if there's anybody else online that wants to sort of ask any questions and stuff yeah hello um, i want to ask a question i was talking oh. to my friend today <clears throat> yeah and um he's a young black man from um from Catford, south east london area and he was telling me quite a few stories of um how he's just been walking down the street minding his own business and then all of a sudden like no police jump out of a right van with the dogs, press him up and push him up against the window of the shop and um, and um threaten him basically for no reason whatsoever just because there's been a fight down the road and this is obviously common practice in um, in these sort of areas and um it's a quite common story. And then um, what sort of advice would you offer to him? He has said that he tried to record it before you're very uh, you're very quiet sarah i didn't ca- catch the last part of that sorry okay um yeah sorry <laughs> it's because my okay. microphone was a bit under my chin that's okay um what i was saying is this sort of thing occurs quite often in those areas and and it, it has a lot to do with, with behind what the riots was all about as well for a lot of people isn't it um is this persecution by the police of certain cultures and certain um youth what sort um, of what and they, and they are they li- they just jump out of the van and, and harass and this, and this sort of yeah, this was one qu- a time that he told uh, me about just today. I was talking to him, and he's got he's got loads of stories. 
Yeah, I mean, I'd be very keen if I was him to start recording and filming, like, even if he had a, a, a sort of um, a device on him, like a hidden device on him to, to film it. Uh, IPCC is, for the most part, a waste, waste of time. It's like going to Coca-Cola to make a complaint about Coca-Cola. Well, yeah. a Coca-Cola going to uphold a complaint that, you know, very unlikely. Um, you're seeing it a lot. You know, I think it was uh, Michael Doherty there who succeeded in... You know, and there's just been a few people who have succeeded in laying um, private criminal uh, complaint against, you know, people like the police and stuff. But um, they either stop it at sort of entry level when you get into the magistrates. They, you know, they'll they'll use excuses like, oh, for those of you who don't know what that is, when you go to, you apply to lay information, basically you can file your own criminal charges against somebody like the police or if it's something that the police or another authority won't do anything about, you, uh, we all have the right to file or lay, lay a complaint. So you go before a justice of the peace or a magistrate um, to lay the complaint. And they use excuses like the complaint wasn't written in plain English and such like. Well, you know, and even if you go in there with a letter off an English professor saying that, the, you know, clarifying that, the, that your complaint was written in plain English, they'll still say that it's not written in plain English and chuck it out. And unfortunately, if you do successfully lay the complaint, what happens then is the Crown Prosecution Service pick up and run with it. And again, you're in the Coca-Cola versus Coca-Cola scenario. So your best, his best way would be to gather evidence, as much evidence as he can, and actually get, you know, get the policeman's ID and serve papers on him and file a civil complaint, but, you know, a civil complaint against the officer in his personal capacity. Because in his personal, if he's acting outside of his office or if he's is acting outside his duties, you know, for example, just jumping out of a, a van and uh, harassing somebody and, and roughing them up and throwing them against the side of a van is definitely not acting inside a, an officer's duty. You, you can file a civil claim against them. No, they, they, that is harm, that's harassment, you name it. Was, it. it was um, a takeaway chicken shop, and the next day the people in the shop were saying, oh, yeah, um, that was a bit rough what they did to you last night. I saw your face pressed up against the shop, because his face was just pressed up against the shop window. But from what I can gather, is this is very common where he where he grew, grew up. So I suppose what they could all do is they could all start taking down the numbers of the relevant officers that are committing these offences and then um, obviously make a complaint maybe all together with um, statements about what's been happening to them because it is very common in, in certain areas of London and in the cities for people to be treated like this. Wow. Um, the, I mean, the civil side of it, literally it's not sort of um, making a complaint. You've got to sort of quantify the harm. So, you, so you you build a case based on how much they've harmed you. Whether you deem the harm to be five thousand, ten thousand, you know, hundred thousand, whatever you consider to be uh, reasonable, but you sort of you sue them in effect for harming you. Um, you go through the you know through the civil court um, as opposed to like trying to go through the official channels because like you say they you know if there's two of them or four of them or six of them the police will just get all gang up together and you know make some bull story up that they were attacked or they were threatened you know like the classic one where they push your arms so far up you know behind your back and then you can't do anything other than try and you know try and get a get your arm free and they're, they're, they're like oh stop resisting stop resisting and it's just you know what they're like i mean the police are Police are criminals. They're 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 they're, act, they're acting as criminals every day. But like, that's that's the way that's the way that they've got it. That this guy would have to try and fight them because when they're faced with actual loss of their own money, or you know they're going to lose something, their house or something like that, you know maybe that will be enough to make them think twice about you know the next time that they go and just pick on somebody to to harass and and sort of throw up against the side of a van it's, it is despicable behavior and it, it is you know like you say you the trouble is with the way that they recruit them now they're they're recruiting people that sort of get off on acting like that if you like 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 the guy with the hat with prajna you know the, 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 he was a magistrate you know you've got good people and bad people everywhere 
but they deliberately try and profile them so that they're a certain type of, you know, person in the police force. And I think that you're going to, you know, as time goes on, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And, you know, that's what there's, there's been no better time to sort of fight. And I think that what we're seeing across, you know, ar around the world now um, with various governments, Canada, America, you know, UK, they're, they're always doing their worst. They're always at their worst just before the game's up, you know, they're, and they know, like, people are becoming so aware that what they're doing is, is sort of wrong. It, it's absolutely ridiculous. They're, you know, they're taking our money. They're, we're the energy source. We're the people of the energy source, and governments are just getting police to do their dirty work. They're getting the court systems to do their dirty work, and we, we just need to start standing up and sort of empowering ourselves, and people need to learn that these these court systems, they're just people. That's all they are is people. And you can beat them, you know? So, but yeah, I don't know if anybody... Prajna, uh, I just read something in the chat uh, there. I didn't quite catch it. I don't know if uh, if you can just repeat it to me or tell me what it was. <coughs> uh, yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. Messed my mic up. Uh, Tom in the chat asks... What about secret courts where you go on with no defence, no witnesses, no press, no public gallery? I'm not sure what the context is, but can you answer that? Um, they, well, like, like I say, the, the council tax are secret courts uh, right now. I mean, the, the sort of well-known case lately is Roger Hayes, but the the day-to-day -day sort of secret court, the council tax court, they, they what they do, what they're doing now, they're having, they may have 2,000 cases to discuss, 500 cases to discuss, and you'll have sort of the employees from the council, you'll have three stupid idiots up on the bench who are sort of there as magistrates, although they're not even, I don't think they're even at that level in that sort of court. It, it is, it's like an internal trial. I think that's an administrative hearing. It's not even, yeah, it's, it's, there's no consequence to it, really. But they, the the councils are in the secret courts now because of the thing, you know, with the Raymond Sinclair. They are, they're holding, they have a, a sort of closed court there where nobody, no members of the public can go in. So if you want to go in and argue a case, they'll go in, they'll discuss, like I say, four or five hundred cases. You know, they'll have a list that they've that they've so say showed the. Uh, the three magistrates on the bench um, and there's absolutely no point in even going to one of them because you can speak, they don't put anything on record, they won't answer any questions they just go, yeah, we're going to grant you a liability order for that so that type, I don't know I've not come across the closed courts for the criminal stuff um, so much but I believe Mark was saying that they they're bringing that in or they've implemented that now which is slightly scary whereby they can sort of come to your house take you to court straight to prison and it's not even um you know on the record i think just got a message that they're running over there a second so what do you want me to do there bob it's all right man i'll just skip the break just continue oh that's okay yeah um but i don't know yeah i don't know enough about that's sort of the you know the criminal closed courts at this stage in the game, the council, the council, tax, the council tax courts, they're all closed now. There's no public, but the, the, you know, that's another scam. The, uh, the Ministry of Justice states that the only people that can issue summons is a court. Uh, you phone the courts up, and I've done this before. I've asked, you know, I've asked the woman on the, on, you know, on the court desk if anybody can issue a summons and she you know no only a court blah 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 and then uh, you know in the middle of the con conversation i introduce a summons that you know has been written by the council uh, and she's like oh well the council's different and you start sort of asking questions and then you know their ass go tight and they, they just want to run and hide behind the desk so um the council's issue their own summonses and if they're in the room for maybe 10 minutes at the most that's the most i've ever seen um you know with anybody i've helped they're they're in their 10 minutes they might go, be discussing 400 cases 2000 cases for every single case that's on that sheet of paper they they put a course a court charge of 50 quid on each individual case although they haven't individually discussed it and there's been no court costs in relation to it so you know 50 times 2000 
is a lot of money 50 times 500 is a lot of money so that's another you know sort of another scam that they're stealing money off and and again you know the next process is the bailiff process the bailiffs will come round and, and incidentally while I was on that subject earlier on when the bailiffs come round for like a court fine or a you know council tax or anything like that they'll always claim to have um, a warrant from the court for the amount and I, I'm sure you're you're aware like the, ba- the bailiff charge is like four or five hundred quid or something ridiculous um, and they claim to have a warrant for the whole amount the warrant only ever covers the um the amount of money that's owed to the person that they're collecting on behalf. The, no, the warrant does, sorry, we got somebody in there. The, the warrant never ever covers the, um, you know, the, uh, the money that they're there to. Sorry, so I lost my train of thought there because somebody just came in on the conversation. The, the, when the warrant will only cover the amount outstanding to the court or whoever employed the bailiff. So if they claim that they've got a warrant for the whole amount, that's complete bollocks. Um, and again, any trouble with bailiffs, just email me and I'll get stuck into it. Um, the uh, and as well, Prajna, yeah, uh, Matthew just uh, texted me and said he's going to wear a hat next time he goes into court. So you've given him a bit of inspiration. <laughs> so I don't know if there's any other questions before we uh, try and get hold of Dean at nine. No, I don't know if you want to go ahead and uh, try and get hold of Dean now. Shall I uh, put the break on Dave and then yeah, bring Dave in. Okay, mate. Okay, no problems. must take cover immediately. The initial flash from the explosion can burn the skin and cause blindness. And that the truth could break out any time in the next two or three days. When you hear the sound of Dark City Radio, you know what to do. You and your family must take cover immediately. Lockdown. 
upside down. Keep away from windows. Cover your head and eyes. Do not look at the sky. Take shelter immediately. Repeat. Stay in pause. Do not leave your home. Take shelter immediately. When you hear the sound, when you hear the sound, you know what to do. You and your family must take cover immediately. Duck and cover. Duck and cover. The initial flash from the explosion can burn the skin and eyes. Hi everybody, uh, back here after the break we got uh, very lucky to have uh, Dean Clifford, he's taken some time out of his uh, working day, he's on his construction site as we speak and uh, Dean, just uh, I guess the best thing for me to do, we're trying to sort of educate people on you know, what the person is, how to use the person in capacity, we're not going to be able to take any questions uh, for Dean today, unfortunately, because we've only got him on for 30 minutes or however long he can stay on for, um, you know, whether it be 15 minutes or 20 minutes. But I guess, Dean, I'll, shall I just hand over to you and you can sort of try and sort of uh, tell people what the person is and, and how the capacity is the important thing and how people should not be afraid of the legal person and try and claim that it's not them and, you know, just stand in court and claim that they're a man and such stupid things as that. So I'll just, shall I just hand over to you? Yeah, sure. I, we can talk about anything you do with us today here. Like I say, I'm on my side. I've got a good 15, 23 minutes. i got to work. And so, uh, boy, Lee's going to be pissed at me. I've been trying to connect on Skype now for months. Ever since I was in jail there this last stint. And uh, I'm, not, I'm never on Skype. I'm never on Facebook anymore. And now I'm getting tracked down on my job site. So, uh <laughs> <laughs> people, don't realize, people don't realize on top of everything I'm doing here that uh, the law stuff is kind of a hobby. I run a construction company. I'm just a busy, busy, busy guy. But, uh, the, 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 world, the world's in some problems here. And it, uh, yeah, the, the, this person thing, it's the most misunderstood thing out there, I think. I mean, I'm not even going to claim that I'm uh, a technical expert on it. Uh, but we seem to have things down a lot better than everybody else. And the problem is that people are getting so harmed by the legal system and this, this thing that we call the legal person, that there's just a great deal of fear out there from not knowing what to do or how to do it to protect yourself from this. And I always like to equate things to, to the things on my job site or in construction or, or other simple concepts that other people understand to get any legalities with it. And one thing that people need to understand is that you have the uh, ha, being recognized as a person in law is a right that you have, because a legal person is an is an entity of diminished capacity. It's a man. It's an entity of diminished capacity. It's a commercial uh, entity, if you want to call it that. It's like a corporation. A cor- uh, an incorporated company is a legal person. But that's why you got that presidential candidate there, Mitt Romney, saying, hey, hey, corporations are, persons too. corporations are persons too, right? They have just as much right as every one of you persons. Well, that's the problem. The government only recognizes you as a legal person, something of diminished capacity, of, of equal status to a corporation. 
Now, that's only a diminished, that's only one small part of you. So despite the fact you have the right to be recognized as one, number one, you don't have the duty or the obligation to be recognized as one. You don't have the right to be recognized as a legal person and just be a man. Um, and the problem with that is, and that's the first thing that people want to do when they start, start discovering these concepts, the problem is we have to uh, be able to operate in this commercial world, right, with banking, money, uh, credit cards, everything. So our legal person is actually, uh, it's a conduit. It's a vehicle to be used in the commercial world. It's no different than a power tool, like a drill. All right, so on, and I always tell people that uh, you've you got to start thinking about the legal person, the name, as a piece of property. It's a piece of real estate, like on a monopoly board. It's the piece that gets moved around the, the, the monopoly board. Like when you pick a piece and you're playing monopoly, you pick a car. And someone says, is that your car? Is that your piece? Yes, that's my piece on the monopoly board. Does that mean that that's all that you are? No. It's an extension of you. It's a piece of property that you own. But the problem is we're not recognized as the owners either. Um, and that's a whole other concept we can get into. And people are welcome to go to the website, by the way, that uh, we're starting to uh, produce a lot more educational videos that are going to be out right away. Uh, we just got our own media server online. I'm going to start getting some new videos online there on our website, uh, deanclifford.info, uh, for people to go and learn about this concept and how to how to use this tool properly. Uh, I mean, we're still learning ourselves because you got to remember this is something we're not taught in schools. In fact, we're intentionally not taught this, and we're intentionally lied to, and we're intentionally deceived and even told that we're crazy when we start addressing this issue and and and. Uh, and talking about it the way that I talk about it, they try to diminish us and make us look stupid for starting to make these arguments now because they realize we've caught on to their scam that they've used to enslave us. So the person turns out to be this tool that we want to use. And to say that you are the person is correct, but that's not all you are. Um, I mean, if I was to pull a hair from my head and hold my hair out and say, well, this hair makes up a small part of me, this little individual piece of hair, it's a part of me, but it's certainly not all of me. It's a very diminished little thing. A hair can't do anything on its own, right? It's just a piece of hair, yeah. but it is a part of me. And it's a very diminished part of me. It's a very small part of me, and that's what the person is, but it's a tool. It's a piece of property, and it's your piece on the monopoly board of commerce that they created, and because we, didn't, we don't know any of this, we are at a severe disadvantage when playing Monopoly against these people, which is what commerce is. That's what court is. That's what all this bullshit is with statutes and government. It's all crap. It's all puke. We don't need to learn any of this stuff anymore. It's not our statutes, codes, all this shit is not applicable to us. Um, council tax, TV tax, all that stuff is all just scam. It's all a scam. They have us going into their courts, which are a court of limited jurisdiction that do not recognize your human rights. When you walk into one of their statutory courts, you're, you're playing a monopoly board, which means they can't see anything off the monopoly board. Nothing exists off of the monopoly board, just the rules of the game, the monopoly game itself. That's why you cannot bring human rights into a statutory court. That's why your human rights are not recognized. That's why you cannot walk in there and say, I'm a man. Of course you're a man, but you're playing a role here today. You're here to represent something of very diminished capacity and standing. And unfortunately, you're going to be liable, just like you have to pay when you, uh, you know, go to jail you know, on the Monopoly board. Your little piece goes to jail. problem is your name is indistinguishable from you. It's a part of you. You can't take the name out of you and throw it in jail. That means you have to go to jail because you're the name for it. Right? They can't throw your wrist in. They can't throw your arm in prison, can they? No. You'd have to go along with it because you cannot be separated from this little legal person fiction that they've attached to you. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, you've attached it to yourself. You created it. And that's a very big point we should get into as well. A lot of people, I've, I've argued with this, this with people over the years. I've had everybody t on, under the sun tell me, that the government created this legal person, they attached it to you, and, uh, and it, it, they own it. Well, that's bullshit, okay? And people have to remember there is nothing, nothing that these people have that you did not give it. Everything comes from us. Everything comes from the people. The people are who have the birthright to this planet. 
And that's why they get us to sign up and play in their game. When they get us to sign up and play in their game and create a monopoly piece of our own, we bring all that with us, like investor, that we bring that all to the table now. And that's how we get them in our lives. And unfortunately, once it's done, it's kind of done. Yeah. And if you want to protect what's yours, now you better learn how to play Monopoly. And you better start understanding that the person is a piece of property. Um, I've, and I, I'm 100% right about this. I don't give a shit what anybody says, and I've proven it. I'm the only person I know of to date that still has not filed or paid income taxes in 17 years now. I've been charged I don't know how many fucking times with, with, with statutory charges, and they can't get me. The longest they've kept me in jail now is, I think, 26 days, which gives me another lawsuit against them I'm pursuing right now. But they end up having to stay proceedings against me on all 11 charges, everything. Drive with no license, uh, drive unregistered vehicle, drive without motor vehicle liability insurance, uh, reckless driving, imprudent driving, assaulting a peace officer because when he came up to touch me and tried to arrest me for not producing identification, which I don't have, uh, I, I grabbed him and defended myself. I threw him around the parking lot. I made him cry a little bit. Then the buddies got there. I got arrested. I got thrown in jail for 26 days. They tried trumping up a whole shitload of charges against me just to scare me into cooperating with them. And I wouldn't. After 26 days, they had to let me out. And now I've got massive human rights violations against, uh, against them for it. They were trying to force me to contract with them through my person. And I refused. And I know how to do that. Yeah. So... You, you don't want to fear the person. The problem is people are, they start fearing the person because as soon as they realized that there's this distinction between them and the person, but they're inseparable, they got scared and they wanted to distance themselves from it right away. It's like, no, no. When, when, when really the first response you should have is, well, yeah, that's fine, and I'm going to protect it. That's my property. That's me. It's an extension of me. And you're not going to attack that or steal from it without harming me as a whole. Right? Yeah. So that's... That's what I've been trying to teach people for the last while now. And I think it's starting to catch on. You, you got to claim it. You got to, it's mine. I own that. Like people are scared when they walk into court and uh, you know, the courts are, are you so-and-so right? Or is that your name? I got no problem yeah. saying, yeah, that's my name. You're fucking right. It is. <laughs> that's also my house. That's my car. They're my power tools. And that's my name. Now, what's in common with all those things? I own them all. I own my house. I own my truck. I own those tools, and I own that name. I own all equity in it. Because whoever's trying to steal from me and whoever's fucking with me and attacking my name and trying to come at me, they've damaged me, and they're going to be liable. And I'm coming after you because you've harmed me. Yeah. And so we're starting to learn the rules of the game now, and they're getting fucking scared. They're getting scared that we figured out the difference between the legal person, the uh, the natural person. That's all you have to do is read up on Lord Blackstone's commentaries, and you'll discover all about this scam that's been around for hundreds and hundreds, if not even a couple of thousand years now, with regards to the person. Um, I think Lord Blackstone he referred to uh, to a legal person as an artificial entity, and a natural person is the God created man or woman. There's definitely a distinction between the two. The problem is they're inseparable. Once you create a legal person, it's yours. Mm-hmm. And you're always liable for your creations. It's a maxim of law. So again, is that people aren't, uh, they don't want to take responsibility for, for A, for something they, that was, well, technically speaking, created for them when they were born. But uh, you'd have a tough time living right now in this commercial world if you didn't have a, a monopoly piece on the board, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So I think in a nutshell, that's a breakdown real quick for I don't know how many beginners you got out there that are listening to this stuff, but uh, you don't need driver's licenses, you don't need insurance, you don't need to file taxes, you don't need to pay council tax, you don't need TV permits, you don't need any of this shit. Because everybody everybody out there has to remember, this place is ours. This, This planet is ours. We were born here, and you have the right to live here free of condition. And that's the big thing everybody has to realize here. Every time they're trying to force you to do something, no one has the authority to place conditions on a right that you have. Right? Yeah, I have I was, the right... Sorry, I was, I was just saying about that, uh, Dean, and I was talking a bit about council tax and the, 
you know, nobody ever asked the council, you know, wh where their sort of bill of sale or where their equitable claim to the land or where their equitable claim to the property is. You know, they're, they're attaching a condition of ownership to something that they well, don't know. You know? People that have have had council tax people and, uh, and, and the cities and stuff like that where, like, where I live. Anybody that's asked that question and they can't answer you. Where do you get your taxing authority from? Who, who are you to place a condition on the ownership of this land? What did you put into it? Do you have an equitable claim? Because if you don't, fuck off. <laughs> like, they're trespassing on your rights. You've got to remember that. A right is a piece of property just like a piece of land. And the minute they're trespassing on one of your rights, like the right to own property. Are you trying to tell me I don't have the right to own property? It's only a privilege? You have the authority to put conditions on, on personal property? Well, holy fuck, who are you, God? Yeah, exactly. Because I'm pretty sure he created everything here, and I'm pretty sure he left it for us to use. So I don't know who the fuck you think you are, but you better prove up here right away. You got a bill of sale from God? You got something in writing that you can prove up as you have the authority to put conditions on something I own? Who the fuck are you? Right? And it, it seemed very movie-esque almost, but, uh, but really, that's the underlying issue here. Who do these people think they are? And they turn out to be nobody. They have no authority. They're just pirates out there in commerce, and they know that we don't know our rights. And so they can kind of come in there by stealth, and they can build these legal claims against you, uh, against title to the property and everything else. And uh, it gets more complicated, and that, that's the real underlying issue. Yeah, yeah, and there was a, there's another remedy there um, where you can actually contact the land registry and and sort of stop them from placing these bullshit, you know, uh, charging orders and one thing and another. Because, like, I, I have, you know, myself stopped the council dead there with asking them for their equitable claim to the land, um, and it does, yep. you know, it does work. So, yeah. Yep. Well, and actually, a further explanation to that, without getting terribly precise, uh, would be that. Uh, there's something out there. This is all contract law, right? And you got to remember that uh, a lot of contracts are 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 created by operation of law. Like you don't need a contract to order a hamburger at a restaurant, right? When you're you walk up to the counter and you order a hamburger, uh, it's expected you're going to pay for it. Then it's expected that, that they're going to give you the burger when it's done. That's that's a contract, right? That's all operation of law. Ninety nine percent of the commerce done in the world is done without the need of a contract. And so what's happened is this relationship that you've kind of built up with the government over the years, and they're not the government, by the way, they're just a private corporation, they're able to prove you have a working relationship together. And it looks like on its face, you're just consenting with everything and you're okay with it. And you probably even solicited their services to do things because you've gone to them and you have made application for permits and licenses under them. Mm -hmm. so, so you've made it appear on the face, like you consider them to be an authority of some, some administrative authority over your legal person. And then other things you've signed up for, like in Canada, it's a social insurance number. In the United States, it's a social security number. I don't remember what it is in the U.K. Uh, national insurance number. National insurance number. There you go. It, it, see, it's the same scam everywhere in the world. They just change the words a little bit. But what that form does, it, by operation of law, is it gives this private organization, calls themselves the government, uh, it gives them what appears to be power of attorney over your legal person. Mm -hmm. So they can simply go and put liens on title immediately without your consent or without a court order because they're claiming to have the power of attorney to do it. And that's one of the first things that teach people to send off the notice. So it's for writing. And you can get it notarized and make sure it's all nice and formal and in, in, in a form that they recognize, which is what the notary does. Uh, and people have to realize that's all a notary is. You get a document notarized, it's instant recognition in their system because that notary is a qualified witness within their system. So the minute you swear that in front of a notary, it's now a matter of fact that has to be recognized in their system. So you send them off a notice revoking, revoking all these assumed whom alleged and claimed powers that the government claims to have over, over your legal person. And that's sending off your first notice, and after that, uh, send them off notices of uh, if this is all contract law and they're trying to force you to do something. And remember, i got human rights. I don't have to do anything for anybody. I certainly don't have to do it for free. 
So if they want me to act as a government agent of some type, and I think uh, Ronald Reagan said it best when he was asked to define what a taxpayer is, and said, well, that's simple. That's a civil servant that never took the civil service exam. Right? So you you applied to hold uh, to hold uh, a title within that organization, like uh, like you work for a corporation now, and so they've it appears your whole life when really you're a legal person with this private corporation are actually a very very small part of you, but you've never learned more than that. So it's like going to work for uh, for a coffee shop and then being being convinced, being brainwashed into thinking that nothing exists inside that coffee shop. So you live there, you sleep there, you eat there, you work there, and you must obey the rules of the coffee shop because nothing else exists. Everything is that coffee shop. Yeah. That's what they've got you convinced you are when they, when they start calling you a citizen and a taxpayer. Well, no, that, that's, the legal person is a very diminished, very small, limited capacity of you. And they've got you brainwashed into, into believing that that's all there is in life, yeah. because that's the only that's the only place they can interact with you. So they want to control your life. So they've got you thinking that that is your life now, and it's not. Yeah, and I, I was. You mad? Say, go on, sorry. Uh, I was saying, Dean. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Um, the, you know, the, the acts and statutes—they are they're nothing more than the corporation. They're, they're, they're corporation rules, if you like. They're that. They apply to agents of government. They are corporate policies only, and all those police out there, police uh, running around, policy enforcers, that's all they are. They're looking for other members of that organization who are breaking corporate policy. That's it. It's all It's all bullshit. Yeah. And they sort of trick you in, in in as much as I've been explaining, that they trick you into... Uh, into that capacity in the courtroom scenario or whatever, they're always right into the person who holds office within yep. that corporation. You know, and it's, yep. it's, it's just, you've got to, they, people are just, I'm just trying to sort of, that's why we had, you know, that I was delighted to get you on because you just explain it so much better than I do. But if, if people get the capacity of the person and, and what capacity you're there in, you know, it doesn't matter what they're trying to claim. You've got to, you've got to get down right there and then who you are. You know, so yep. I'll carry on, though. Carry on. Yeah, no, basically, it's like any time a police officer approaches you and, and starts talking to you or demanding anything from you, um, remember, he's there in his official capacity. He's trying to con- and contract with you. And the more he can get you to answer questions or or, or anything, um, he's actually, uh, he's, he's in this contract that, that's, that's very enforceable. Um, and that's why that's the first thing I asked for, right? They don't want to talk to you. They, you know, they won't walk up and it's license or registration or uh, they just want to see ID of some kind. And yeah. people don't know enough to say, excuse me, why are you speaking to me? Oh, well, you know, you're required to identify my... I'm not required to do fuck all. <laughs> Who the yeah. fuck are you and what do you want? Oh, well, I'm a, poli- oh, good. I'm a police officer. Good. Show me your ID. You're a public servant. You're required to identify myself yourself to me. I'm not speaking to you unless I have your name and your date of birth first. Because if you damage me, I'm going to who the f*** you are so I can come after you. They usually leave pretty quick at that point. Yeah, I'm, excuse me, I'm private. I exist in the private. I need to see your government issue ID because apparently you work for the government. Right, they get real pissy about that, but everybody can research videos online of people doing this, and the cops get really mad. They'll they'll get more cops to show up, another ten of them around you, and they'll all be threatening you. We're going to kick your teeth in. You're going to jail. We're going to taser you. You better produce some fucking ID. Mm-hmm. And the reason they're doing the minute you produce ID, that grants them jurisdiction. And now they can do everything that they're threatening to do against you. Well, they can't. They still can't. But uh, they're they're helping build on this presumption that you're something that they have authority over. And again, it's not your ID. If the government can take your driver license away, then it's not yours. It's theirs. So if you're ever going to produce one of that one, demand it. Say, well, I've got this thing, but it's not mine. It's a copy of the government. It's not mine. That's theirs. Own it. 
And that removes yourself from the presumption that that, that is you. You've got to remember that this is legal fiction land. <laughs> it's, I always try to equate to people. It's actually almost like make believe. It's, it's a land of make believe. Sorry, a world of make believe that exists over top of the land. You've got the common law, the law of the land. That's the place where it says that all men are born equal and we all have the right to do whatever we want as long as we don't harm another, which means my jurisdiction ends where yours begins. That's the law of the land. Then we've got this other uh, world we created, and it's the Holy Sea of Commerce. That's why Vatican City is called the Holy, the Holy Sea. The Holy Sea of Commerce exists above the land. That's all admiralty and contract land. Uh, it's a whole separate world of legal fictions, paperwork, where there's nothing real, just paperwork. It's just commerce and nature. That is it. And you've got your little token that you created, your, your person to operate in that world, and it's backed by you. You're the surety for that person. That's what gives it uh, energy, if you want to call it that. That's what gives it credit. That's what gives it power to do something in this world of commerce. If they sucker you into there without knowing any rules of commerce or that you're even engaged in this whole world of commerce, and they, they use your ignorance against you. That's all that's going on. It's a trick. The whole thing is just a trick. Sleight of hand, mirrors. Um, I'm not sure if people in the UK know what a Tijuana donkey show is. A what, sorry? <laughs> yeah. A Tijuana donkey show. Oh, yeah, I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that's what the whole thing is. The whole thing is a Tijuana donkey show. It's all about making you believe that you've done something wrong or that their statutes are something that you need to care about. And, and if this is all contract law, that's why I'm trying to teach people that really the first words we should be saying to these people is, excuse me, if you want another 10 seconds of my time, that's going to cost you $50,000 up front. I'm a busy man. I got yeah. shit to do. You want a contract with me? My rates are $50,000 an hour. Up front, minimum three hours, which means the minute that I have to do one second of work, your world contracting with you, it's $50,000 three hours. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, so this is contracting. Think. This is just like being a stucco contract or, or a plumber or anybody else. I don't do business with anybody that I don't consent to do business with, and it's on my terms. If you don't like my terms of service, then fuck off and go find somebody cheaper. Go find somebody that believe your bullshit because it, I'm not one of them. And by the way, if you continue talking to me for another five seconds, I will take that as agreement of the parties that you've accepted my terms of service, which means I'm going to bill you $150,000 if you don't get the fuck away from me in about the next .3 seconds. Yeah, that's, that's how you enforce your rights. I just want to say at this point as well for for the listeners that are new to you, Dean, that, that this is actually the way that you do talk to these people. And, you know, I've been trying to say, you know tell the people they're just people. That's all they are. They're just people. And for the most part, they're the most ignorant, you know, people that you come across. Uh... And, and just not to fear them. Just don't fear them. Stand you, you, the rights that you have are the rights that you protect. Your that you you can stand there and protect. If you don't, if you yep. don't protect your rights, you have none. You know. Yep. I, you're required to identify yourself. I have the right to remain private until someone has made a claim against me. Are you making a claim against me? Are you representing someone who's made a claim against me? What do you want? Because if you have no claim against me, we have no business together. Unless you bother me for the next five five seconds, which means you're paying my rates. So what's it going to be? And no, you don't have to be nice to these people, but because they're not nice with us. No. Okay? If we don't comply with them, do they not just have have more of their armed thugs show up and then they start getting physical? Right. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're not. This is this is serious shit. Like this is this is not uh, this is not playtime. Like for, for people that actually want to pra- practically apply this stuff and get used to their rights and re- reclaim their rights. You got to know how to stand your ground and say, "Excuse me, I have a right to remain private. I have a right to not identify myself to you. Who are you? What do you want?" And we're like, "Oh, this actor. Sta- I don't give a shit about your acts and statutes. I have nothing to do with your crap organization. What do you want?" Right? It is all puke. They yeah. they need you to believe it. Oh, though, get to remember that's uh, mens rea intent. They they need to get you to believe it because that's consent. When you believe it and you think you have to obey them, well, that's consent. That's cause it's, uh, we, used to, we used to call it manufacturing consent. They manufacture the, 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 on the outside of the surface. They've made it appear as though you're consenting to all this. Right? You've got to remember, 
they have to get around violating your human rights, your rights as a man or a woman. And to do that, they make it appear as though uh, you, they have your consent to be doing this. And it says, Dean, incidentally, you know, in, in a few of the administrative law books there that I've written, it says right in there they are armed with coercive powers. Um, you know, and it says right in there as well that the, the Crown has uh, very limited, well, little or no legal um, power except in the capacity of employer. It says it right in their own law books. You know what, you know, the thing that you keep keep saying to people, these acts and statutes apply to agents of government or when they trick you into assuming that capacity. Yes. Yep, that, that's exactly it. Like I say, I always use the example Tim Hortons because uh, I'm up here in Canada where there's a Tim Hortons on every corner, a coffee shop. But uh, that's all it is. They, they, they've, they, they've re- they really do have your mind in a prison. Uh, I, I hate using these metaphors, but it really is true. Your mind is in a prison. They've got you believing your world is only this land of statutes and acts where the government is in authority. Well, that's like being inside someone's house and never leaving their house, and the rules of their house apply. They've got you trapped. You've got your mind trapped in a little box that you are nothing more than a servant of the government that must obey their acts of statutes. And that is, that is absolutely 180 degrees flipped from what the reality of the situation, which is that we are the free people, we own this earth, all the equity is ours, we loan it to them, and they are our servants. But they flip things around on us, and that's in the Bible. It actually talks about that, that we're going to be no, be- no, no better than slaves until we wake up and realize that we've got a birthright, and we claim that birthright, and we take control of it. Until you've done that, uh, you don't have any rights. If you don't know who you are, it's not their job to tell you that. And if you, don't, if you can't enforce your rights, no, no one else is going to enforce your rights for you. And rights are simple. Rights are easy. I mean, <clears throat> geez, anybody that can memorize, uh, uh, count from 1 to 100, can memorize their rights. Right? You have the right to life, liberty, and property. I have the right to own property. I have the right to be, uh, to, to be free. I have the right to be alive. Period. Yeah. How hard was that? Yeah, exactly. Okay, you're required to do this. I'm not required to do fuck all. That's pretty simple. Yeah. How how can you be required to do anything just because you're alive? Isn't that called slavery? Yeah. Involuntary servitude? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, just for being alive. Yeah, you're required to produce ID just for being alive. Oh, really? Oh, really? Well, you're you're required to clean my toilets, buddy. What do you think of that? No, I'm not. I am. Or yes, you are. Right? It's just that's how stupid this stuff is. But yeah. they've got you believing it, and it was all done incrementally over generations. So that uh, you've got to remember, the, the people that are that are behind all this are are part of families <clears throat> that plan this stuff generationally. They're always planning for twenty and forty years down the road, right? Like all that agenda twenty one uh, stuff, right? They're planning for like two thousand and thirty right now. They're planning down the road. Most of us don't plan beyond next week because we don't even have money to eat half the time. We're not planning 20 years down the road except for our retirement that they're going to fuck us out of, I might add. Right? So things on this planet are getting real bad. Uh, I get pissed off sometimes and I disappear for a month or two at a time because I'm getting so pissed off at people not standing up and starting to claim their rights and just, just man up. Just man up and grow some fucking balls and, and, and go and protect your rights already and quit being afraid of these people. Man, I've been to jail five times, and I've been to jail a total of two months of my life. I can tell you right now, there's nothing to fear from jail. I fear being a slave, and I fear being a coward. But I do not fear going to jail. If they're going to throw me in jail for a month, well, there's nothing I can do about that. But I'll be damned if I'm going to be a coward and live in fear my whole life because I think these people might throw me in jail. What are they going to do if everybody stopped listening to them tomorrow? Are they going to throw 7 billion people in jail? Uh, another interesting point, Dean, as well, is that, um, you know, years, hundreds of years ago, people used to die standing up for their rights, you know? Now the worst thing they can do is throw us in a jail, and, you know, like you've said many times, if, if this is the best we've got, we're already in jail. It's just a smaller room. They're, yeah, it's, it's just a smaller room. That's why they, they tried throwing me in solitary confinement last time just to shut me up. I was actually, they, they actually put in writing that I was being thrown in solitary confinement due to my political beliefs. That's just how ignorant these people are, by the way. They didn't even know they were violating my rights by putting me in solitary confinement because of my political beliefs. They put it in writing, for Christ's sake. That's what we're dealing with, mass ignorance from the people enforcing the statutes as well. So we've got to deal with that. 
<laughs> they're starting to wake up. But, uh, and, yeah, I've, I've talked about this on, on, on some of my shows that I've done, or I've told people this exactly what you just said. In all of human history, there has never been a better time in your, ever, ever in human history to stand up for yourself and to fight for your rights, because that's exactly it. What can they do? What are you going to do? Throw me in jail? You're going to throw me and the other 100,000 people in jail? Granted, 500 years ago, 400 years ago, they would just kill us. They can't do that anymore. They may try, but that's, uh, the world's, a, the world's a, a smaller place these days, right? Uh, we all know what's going on on the other side of the world within a matter of minutes. Last time I got arrested thrown in jail there, within a matter of a half a day, the local police department that arrested me, they were getting emails and phone calls from Australia. So they know the world's watching them now. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. So, <laughs> so, and that's the worst they can do. It's exactly it. They can throw us in jail for a little bit, and then you have recourse. You have recourse. You can go after them for the, for the, for the damages that they did. Go after the alleged judge, and they're not judges, by the way. When you're in statutory tort court, that is not a judge. He is not under his oath. That is not a public courtroom, kangaroo court. And I have, I have tell them this Mr. Supernumerary. They're a paid actor. They're a paid actor. Look it up. In Roman civil law, supernumerary. They are not a judge. And they are authorizing you to go to jail, so that means that they're liable. So I would sue those bastards if they participated in that. You say, that's good. You just throw me in fucking jail. You just sign your name to that order and put me in jail, you fucker, and I'll see you in court. You just do it. You issue that order. Oh, and by the way, if you're going to issue an order, here's how much I charge for my services. Yep. You've got to remember, when you walk into a restaurant, you order something. Do you get it before you pay for it? Yeah. Oh, fat, well, it depends. Fast food restaurant, but that's a contract. Got to remember that. If I walk into McDonald's and order a and order a Big Mac, I'm I I'm ordering a Big Mac. Okay, that'll be four dollars. I'm ordering you to jail. All right, that'll be a million dollars cash up front, please. <laughs> exactly. And, and for and most, you, a lot of the time, Dean, there's never a, like there's a lot of cases now where there's no warrant of committal as well, isn't there? There's people that have asked for warrant of committal and they've ended up actually be, wind up being let out in some cases as well. Yep. Oh, they refused to show me a warrant of committal the last time I was in there. After 26 days, not only did I not see a warrant of committal, I still have yet to see a charge. They wouldn't produce a charge. They wouldn't produce a warrant of committal. They wouldn't produce a fucking thing. Not only that, they refused to produce the video evidence now, uh, the videotape from the, uh, the police uh, dash cam, which I really wanted. I wanted to put that up on YouTube to show people that, yes, Yes, you can physically defend yourselves from an un unlawful arrest. In fact, I placed him under arrest as soon as he touched me. He said he was uh, Officer Drain of the, uh, of the RCMP in Gimli, Manitoba. You're under arrest. I said, for what? Well, he, he couldn't even answer me. He didn't know. They're that ignorant. They just think that's all they have to do is say you're under arrest. Well, no, if you arrest somebody, you have to have a reason. As soon as he touched me, I said, no, dude, now you're under arrest for assault. Oh, you can't arrest me? Yes, I can. <laughs> for, I don't know if anybody's listened to those RCMP tapes I have up from uh, about a year and a half ago uh, where the, the RCMP agreed with me that I have the exact same arrest powers as them. Yeah. And their highest authority, the most authority that they have, the highest authority they have is the same authority that I possess. And these two that I was talking to that night, they knew that. And the one guy said, yeah, you're right. I said, I know I'm right. So I arrested this guy. He didn't think I could. And then we ended up just uh, getting into a scuffle in the park a lot. And I threw him around a little bit. And then his buddies all showed up. And he went away over to his car to go for a while. And then some woman came up to me. And she was trying to sweet talk me. And then when she couldn't do that, uh, they started threatening me again. And they started doing their badge tapping thing. But fortunately, I had a witness this time where they're tapping their badges. And they're saying, oh, we own the roads. And I am the law. Right? Like, that's the idiots we have to deal with. They're like high school bulls that are too stupid to know any better. And it's a yeah. deficiency in their training. They're, perp they're intentionally trained to be so ignorant that they don't even know they're violating your rights. Yeah, yeah. And they're, they're actually employed. They're, they're deliberately employing people like that. I've, just, I've said earlier on the show, Dean, they go out and employ the stupidest, most ignorant bastards you can find. They, they you know, that they... They deliberately, fight, they deliberately profile them to yeah. be stupid and ignorant, you know? Now, yeah, let, let me clarify that. For anybody that thinks that we're just saying that kind of stuff, right? Oh, they're just saying that. I will get, do a Google search for a guy in the United States who is currently suing his local guy that he applied to who was turned down 
because his IQ was too high. Yeah, he was turned down. That. They refused to hire him because he had his IQ was too high, and that meant that he would know what he's doing. He's smart enough to figure out that what they're doing is criminal. Yeah. They can't hire people like that. They cannot hire people that are smart enough to figure out that they shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff. So they intentionally hire. Um, and this actually turns out to be true as well. I remember hearing years ago that where I live, they psychologically, psychologically profile uh, applicants. That's and the only hire of one that are found to have uh, sociopathic tendencies. And those files are all sealed and they're kept at the University of Manitoba, I'm told. And that turns out to be true. And they only hire people that have sociopathic tendencies and are I Does that not sound like mafia goons to you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I said that very thing actually earlier on the show that Tony Blair, when he was in power over here, he, they, they developed a system to do just that to profile the stupidest. And like you say, you know, they're deliberately profiled to do that so that they don't question and they don't know what, you know, they're, they're just idiots. They're ignorant, yeah. you know? So next time Bob bothers you, bothers you, congratulate him for failing the IQ test. <laughs> yeah, quite, quite. But yeah. yeah. So. Oh, congratulations on failing the IQ test because uh, you, you you passed for becoming a cop. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. But yeah, yeah, I don't know how you're doing for time, Dean. I mean, I'm happy for you to keep talking, but I, I need you only want. Ah, yeah, you know, I'm on my cell. I'm actually surprised we have such a good connection, guys. See, the, man, you got you got to love the age we live in right now. This is why we're going to win. We've already won. The war ha- hasn't been played out yet, though. Uh, if if the head of the beast hasn't realized we kicked its ass yet, because. Uh, Lines of communication are a little slow. We kick their ass, and the head doesn't know it yet. Uh, they're going down, and this is exactly why you and I can speak on opposite sides of the planet, real time, on cell phones, on Skype. You, we're posting. If something happens on the other side of the planet, we know about it instantly on the other side of the world, and we're all starting to wake up. It's like a collective consciousness that's getting more, uh, more complex. You know what I mean? Like an organism that's getting more complex and, and self-aware. Yeah. All, all of us, all people around the world are... Together, we're uh, an, an organism, uh, another organism of its own, that is getting more complex. And we're all—that's what—that's why that whole hundred monkey system, uh, hundred monkey, hundredth monkey thing works. Yeah, right. They're all connected. And as soon as a certain segment of the population figures something out, it becomes more readily acceptable for the rest of them. And people learn this stuff almost spontaneously now. It seems. I mean, you wouldn't believe the hard road we've had over the last thirteen, fourteen years with this stuff. Everyone thought we were crazy. Everyone told us to shut up and pay our taxes and do as we're told like everybody else. People just get mad at us. Well, now people are chasing us down, and they want to know all about this. I can't even fucking sleep or work anymore because so many people want to know what their rights are. Yeah, well, geez, I used to have to hold people down and put them in the face until they would listen to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite, it's, it is superb. And like I say, you know, I've said to the people, you know, when I introduced you uh, earlier on, you've made so many sacrifices for so long, uh, you know, and it's awesome that, that you even came on the show, Dean. And I know, you know, you get inundated with people, um, you know, email, whatever, you know, it, it, and it is. Th- I cannot thank you enough for, for taking time out of your working day today. I really, really do appreciate that. So thanks for that. You know, it's been well, yeah, I appreciate it. You know what? This is a labor of love for me. I love, uh, oh man, I, I'm, I'm really getting sick with what's going on this planet. I'm sick and tired of corporate greed. I'm sick and tired of corporate pollution. I'm sick and tired of these assholes showing up at my work sites or at my properties trying to tell me what to do with my life and I have to obey this environmental law or something else. While the other, while these rotten cocksucking corporations are running around the planet with their fucking nuclear power plants and bombing the shit out of people and everything else they're doing, you know what? I've fucking had enough. I've had enough, and unfortunately, the same thing on my job site. If I want something done right, I've got to do it myself. And if that means I have to run around the world waking people up myself to stop all this bullshit, then I will. Yeah. I will, because I'm freaking tired of it. Yeah, no, I don't have to do this. There's going to be no politician put into office that fixes things. This problem is there's only one person on this planet that can fix this. And if everybody wants to know who that is, or more, I want everybody to, when they wake up in the morning, go to the bathroom and look in the mirror, because there's your answer. That's the person that's, that, that, that is enslaving you. It's you through your own ignorance. And you're the only one that can save this world. You're, you're your own worst enemy and your your savior at the same time. It's uh, unfortunately that involves everybody taking on a little bit of liability here, some responsibility, stepping up, 
and doing something about this. Yeah, 100% agree with that. Yeah, I don't know. I could so, probably rant yeah. off forever, but if there's something specific, uh, <laughs> you know, you mentioned, uh, like, TV tax, uh, or whatever the hell it's uh, called, TV uh, permits TV and uh, account TV tax. Yeah. 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 Number one, I can't believe you people have to pay for a permit just to the TV and watch it out, oh, by the way. Number one, like, talk about a violation of your right to own property and use it. Putting a condition on your ownership. Oh, okay, well, you bought that and you own that? Yep. Okay, well, if you want to use it, you have to pay us money. Excuse me. Okay. This is no different than council tax for property, okay? Um, only tenants pay to use something. If you're an owner, and they don't view you as the owner, by the way, that's another thing people have to remember. In legal land, once they enter legal land, legal land is the land of uh, procedure and assumptions and presumptions. So all these courts and all these, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll loosely call them governments, but they're not, all these, these entities, they operate off of presumptions and assumptions. Like when, when, a, when a claim is brought into court, in statutory court, a criminal charge, they operate on presumption that the Crown Prosecutor bringing the, bringing the case has brought it in good faith and everything that they've claimed is a fact until it's been disputed. And that's why they're able to proceed the way they do. The same thing with the TV tax and the council tax. It's presumed that the tax is legitimate. It's presumed the Crown until you rebut it. And there's simple ways to do that. Again, who are you? Who are you? What's your standing? Excuse me, did you loan me the money to buy this property? Do you own any act in this property? What is your standing? What do you have to do with my property in the first place? It's, I'm the owner. I'm the owner. I'm the owner. I'm the one that has the right of use. I'm the use of this property. Who are you? What the hell are you? Those are all simple questions. Yeah, and a bill right. of sale is, is, yeah, top trumps, really, isn't it? Bill of sale. Bill of sale is ultimate proof of time. Mm. One of these I suggest you get out of here right now. Or unless you have one from God. A bill of sale from You don't have to supersede this bill of sale. And that's another concept. See, there's so many concepts here people don't understand. And uh, through TV, oh, by the way, if, if you can't watch TV with a uh, TV tax over there, good, stop watching TV. Here's your a requirement I make upon people. The first thing I always tell people is I'm not even going to bother talking to you until you cancel your cable TV. Is that shit brainwashing you? That's the problem. Everything I tell you is going in one ear and out the other because you're going home tonight, you're going to watch. Yeah, and that's I... going to override everything you just spent the day learning. It's going to fucking, it's going to program you into becoming a slave again. Yeah, definitely. So get rid of the TV. Quit funding these people. Quit. Oh, oh, oh. I'm broke. I can find $150 a month for my satellite package. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, you know what? I, I have to work hard all week. And if I want to sit down and join myself for two hours and watch TV, I have the right to do that. Yes, you have the right to do that. And you're, you're going to be a slave. Go ahead. Of course you have the right to do that. I have the right to cut my own head off right now. I have the right to go grab one of the nailing hammers right now and put a bunch of four-inch nailing spikes into my foot. Should I do that? <laughs> no, I got the right to do it, though. Congratulations. Okay? So, you know what? Read a book. If you got two hours where you just want to enjoy yourself, learn to read again. You want to be smarter? Learn something. Read something somebody smart wrote. Christ, you in the U.K., how, uh, how, how many full and people that wrote the great works came from that area of the world. Yeah. Go and read some of them. You guys are from the land of Francis Bacon. Jeez, go read some of his stuff if you want to know law. Natural law. Law and nature. That's where a lot of this stuff comes from. It's all natural law when you get right back to the... You, you want to leave the monopoly board and get back to, 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 to the real world? That's where natural law is. Yeah. Okay. But when you're dealing with the legal person, you're on the monopoly board. So no one cares if you're a man. You, you're basically in control of that monopoly piece, the car or the thimble or the uh, the train or uh, whatever other monopoly piece they have. Right? That's just the representation of it. You're representing it. You're the one moving the piece. The liable and has to pay the bills. Okay? So yeah. it doesn't matter if you're a man or not. You're liable for, for what you own. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, we're nearly um, out of time now, Dean, so I suppose we'll let you get back to your construction work. And once again, just thank you so much for taking your time, you know, the time out of your working day. And, you know, I'm sure people can hear, and I just want to reiterate that Dean is, you know, one of the most, he's, he's the most real 
person you could come across in this movement. You know, he lives, he, you can hear the passion in him. He absolutely talks to these people exactly how he says he does. Really, really. And if you get onto the website, deanclifford.info, um, you know, and, and hopefully Dean can help with alleviating your fear and stop fear in these idiots, yep. you know. So. Yep. And the, uh, the the training videos are coming. Now. It took us a while to get a member here. I, I run a training company. Everybody out with the administration website works for them. It's like a hobby. We're trying to get this off the ground as a hobby. Uh, yep. We really want to do something. We really want to get everybody on board. And we actually we charge fifteen dollars a month right now for membership. And we're using that money to actually build an organization, like a lobby group, right? Um, not only that, but I figure it keeps a lot of the shit heels off there too, a lot of the, uh, the trolls, and, uh, I figure if a cop or the government wants to monitor what we're doing, then they can at least give us 15 bucks a month for that. But, um, uh, I just want to say as well, Dean, on that, on that, um, you know, you, you hear people piss and win sometimes, you know, they grudge $15 a month, and I just want to say, you know, Dean has put 14 years of his life, he, he, he is on radio shows. Uh, he is researching. He's done, you know, months in prison. Uh, you know, and when he's in prison, he isn't earning money. So, this is, you know, Dean is not in this to make money. He has done this for years and years and years, free of charge. There's, there's you know, don't, don't begrudge $15 a month for being part of a forum that's worldwide that can save, you know, that can save you, save this planet. So, you know, I just wanted to put that out, Dean, just so everybody... Uh, sort of got, got my message because I'm quite passionate. I, I get quite uh, angry, as you know, about people pissing and whinging about things like that, you know? Yeah, well, and, and uh, no, oh, I believe me, if I wanted to get rich, I would just save for the vehicle and get a driver's license. And I would just work my construction company because I'm an awful lot of money right now. If I split the game and, and, and got rich like everybody else, I don't want that. I don't want that at all. I look around and see what's going on on the planet right now. There's a lot of bad things going on. And uh, I want to be able to look back when I'm older and say, yeah, you know what? I, I, didn't, I didn't play their game. I'm not, I'm not cool with what they're doing. And I, I, I did something about it at least. Yeah. So, and uh, anybody else, there's a, uh, there are people who are afraid of just about everything. People have to stop being afraid, number one. Um, for people that, that read the Bible and believe in that stuff, if you're doing what's right and just, won't you be protected anyways? If you're supposed to be doing what, and what you're doing, you're supposed to be doing. You don't have to be like the Pope driving around with six inches of bulletproof glass. If that guy really was God on this earth and he was protected, would he need all that bulletproof glass? <laughs> yeah. No, that cocksucker is fucking Satan. I'm telling you. He yeah. knows it's not in bulletproof glass because if he uh, if he really was uh, in the physical manifestation of Jesus on this earth right now, he wouldn't need that. Um, and don't be, be scared of dying. Number one, they can just kill you. Um, you're more likely to die in a car accident than you are from the government crashing through your door and putting a bullet in your head. Uh, people like me used to think that like 12 years ago. Oh man, they're going to come and kill us the minute we try talking to people about this stuff. Not what nonsense. I live in a beach house that has no curtains. Believe me, if they're going to shoot me, they've got every opportunity in the world to do it. And the other thing I can guarantee everybody, yeah, care who you are, you are going to die one day. Yeah. So you can do that sniveling like a cockroach when 90 years old managed to hide and do everything that you were told to do and were a good slave and live as long as possible. We can live a life of substance and just say, nah, if I'm going to be here, I'm going to do something right while I'm here. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's a you know, brilliant words to end with, I think. So, yeah, that's brilliant. So, Dean, we'll let you get back to your uh, construction. And once again, thanks. And, you know, I'll speak to you uh, later in the week at some stage. But, um, yeah, just thank you again, Dean, for coming on. Much appreciated and brilliant. Hey, no problem. I appreciate getting the email updates stuff. You guys, there are people that have gone into court and have done this and have won hands down. Yeah. And there is plenty of those cases of those people. For, for everyone that thinks we're just getting railroaded and no one's listening, oh, no. No, 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 no. For people that go in there and they stand their ground, we're all winning. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know that that is happening in this country. I've witnessed it. I've done it myself. And I've done it using these methods by learning about the person. So, you know, like I said, I've said to the, them before on the show, Dean, there's never going to be a public record of this because they will avoid it at all costs. You know, they, they, they yep. will always withdraw, not withdraw, they'll always stay or, 
whatever they will be, they will never make a public record of of a success so well that's exactly it people oh i want to see the i want to see the i want to see where they dropped all the claims against you or whatever and i'm like look they, they always they always make it appear on the record as though they ever lost or they'll gay proceedings and they'll say well we have to stay because the paper was filled out wrong or the date was wrong or we use the form 3c and we're supposed to use a form 4a i've had that if for yeah. any reason to drop without making it appear as though they're full of shit and you won. Yeah. <laughs> they will do that, but I don't care. That is a win. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, so well, anyway, thanks, Dean. Much love. Hey, it's much all good. Keep, in, uh, keep the updates coming, and uh, yeah, we'll try to connect again maybe another time here. And we'll talk about this time. We're trying to build organization and get something going, and uh, we're going to get the educational pieces up from there. And, um, I keep the real goal of this, too, is uh, if this Sorry, Dean, you lost The only way to fix this is for us to build something that's for our benefit. Absolutely, yeah. That's so that's cool. what we're trying to do. That's what the forum and the website is going to be the start of, is I want to, I want to build a new party. Right now, there's only one party on the street that's theirs. It sucks, but everybody has to go there because it's the only party, well, the Google party. So yes. There's a better one that opens up down the street. Everyone's going to say, oh, so-and-so's having a party. And it's better. They got better food. They got better music. And the guy that owns the house is a complete asshole. Let's go there. So let's do it. If we don't like their system, then do we not have the capacity? Do we not have the ability to build another one? One for us? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that, I, I keep telling people that as well. You know, quit, quit worrying about trying to, you know, um, you know, build your own party then. I can't get my words out. But the, the, yeah, build your own party. Go, you know, let's create something better. Let's create something much better. And I think that the, the website is a great way of sort of people coming together. So it's deanclifford.info. Um, get on there and you know start getting involved and start empowering yourself there's always there's people out there you know there's people on the forums and yep. stuff that are that are doing stuff and they can help you you know be able to start connecting with people that are more local to you find people that are local there's a lot of people out there that are actually alone they're the only one that, that believes in this stuff their family even thinks they're crazy i know people like that oh. yeah i think we lost you there hello did we, did we drop the call, Rob? We've lost his audio. He's still on the line, but we've lost his audio, unfortunately, Dave. Oh, nightmare, nightmare. All right, well, I guess, uh, should we, do you want to leave it there then, Bob, for the night? Uh, shall we go uh, back into the other thing, just in case anybody wants any quick questions before we go? Or? Uh, we'll spin it over to the Dark City, we'll put the jingles on, uh, I'll start them now, and we'll go into the Dark City, and then people can ring in. And uh, we're uh, we're good. <laughs>